Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger and Ramadan Mubarak. Um, I'll get right to it. As I've stated before, there's only one reason to continue to discuss um, the simp slap on stage seen by sundry. And that is that the dynamics behind that are actually not limited to Hollyweird, but they're facing real non-celebrity black families and black would-be families. It's really pretty much facing black America. Communities are made of families, and we have to admit our families are broken, so we're really more of just a population than we are a community. Because the black family is dead, it cannot form. I mean, it's dying, but it's for all practical purposes dead. It will not come back, it will not be saved. Maybe there's hope for a short time, but even that's disappearing because we're not in touch enough with traditional men from traditional regions to get them ready for this onslaught of not just feminism, but militant feminism and misandry that is coming around the corner for them. But the militant feminists and the misandrists are in contact with the ladies in these traditional societies to bring this militant feminism and misandry around the corner to them. Coming around the bend is destruction and we're not working with them to tell them how to make it non-destructive. Hurry up, put the speed bumps on the road, put the tires, spikes on the road as it comes around the curve, as it comes around the corner, because this is necessary. The truck needs to be disabled. And this is not what's happening. So even that's not going to be a long-term solution if it turns out to be one at all. I'm going to tell you now, gentlemen, it's, it's over. And the one way you can save it is that you can go to traditional areas. But we're not fast enough in, in communicating with these men. Now, I told my partners from Nigeria that when the word got out about how the North was still traditional and the women would spoil you there. And I've seen um, these men's wives and daughters and they are nice to look at. So when I told these men that you will have competition as the word gets out, because the Muslim men who are more traditional uh, will go over there. They said, that's not competition. That's good because, um, there are enough ladies looking for husbands. There are enough ladies there to marry to these men. They outnumber the men that are there. But they also told me, they said, you know, a lot of the men that are polygamous can't afford to really look after one and they'll marry two to three, rarely four, but they'll marry them and will not have any pullout game either. So all this talk about how, um, you know, polygamy is, is only done wrong by the black American is crap. That's cap. And everybody knows how it should be done, but it's not only done wrong in black America. They said it's even done wrong back there, back home. And one of the reasons is because if the man ain't really got much and he marries one wife, she'll be looking like, well, you know, this ain't enough. What you do provide ain't enough. And that's why he will turn around and marry someone else. He doesn't have the money to fut her the shuck up because some of them just can't fut the shuck up. So the only thing that'll fut her the shuck up is competition. But then the other one's going to act the same way. So the same mechanisms exist and the same mistakes exist. So I wanted y'all to, to understand that too. 
But what they were saying is that, I mean, if these men can take care of a wife, then there are enough gorgeous and well-behaved ladies to marry them. And that as long as their uh, ladies are not mistreated by these foreign men, they're not against these women marrying foreign black men. Now, this is northern Nigeria we're talking about. Kaduna State, Kano State, Zamfara State, Bauchi, even the northern parts of uh, Plateau State. Even the federal capital territory where Abuja sits. There's saying plenty there. Now, this is, of course, they're talking about uh, four... Muslims to marry Muslim women and for traditional minded Christian men to marry traditional women that happen to be Christian. They're talking about this. The point I'm making is that while this is a good temporary solution, we still have to be in contact with men like that to let them know what's coming down the pipe. Or coming down the pike. The proper way to say it is coming down the pike with a K. But you know, sometimes you got pipelines with oil and people think they that the phrase is coming down the pipe. That's just as good. What's coming around the bend? What's on its way is something about which we need to be in communication with them. And maybe it will not be dead. The black family will not. Maybe. But right now, as it stands, it's going to die. It's in the process of dying. And for what? Because it has to. Dying for what? Because of the insistence of us being too easy. Though we're waking up, we're waking up too slowly. And because of the insistence of Boom Shika and Bonquisha and Sapphire in just taking the absolute worst demanding the most in exchange for nothing. Hell, even in exchange for negative treatment. This is why. And we're seeing the effects of that play out on that stage. Now the world knows it. Because see here, most people know if they follow the actors at all in this country, in Saudi, they know she cheated. They know she said to him to his face that she cheated. They know that she cheated with her son's friend. They know this. They think that what he did was a no noble thing to do in a normal situation, but that one, it was a joke. So she wasn't under threat. Number two, she's already given up any honor that Will was protecting because she cheated on him and then told him on camera that she did it. And the ones who are fluent in English know that she tried to rename adultery something else to get out of the accountability for it. So even here, they're fully aware of what's going on. They're asking me why it is that the people that are normally conservative are involved in this. And I have to say, well, to a certain extent, that is Hollywood. But it's also, and I have to tell them the truth, it is also because attractive black women in the West got attitudes. And they don't feel like they need to do anything traditional or normal. They feel like it's our job to be providers, protectors problem solvers, everything else, all those four P's, shout out to Crimson Cure, and that it is their job to be liberated and spoiled and lazy and a problem and a headache for us. They believe that that's what they're supposed to do. And that we're supposed to earn everything and get nothing. I have to tell them that. There's one good new, one thing that's good about this. Despite how many sisters are saying, yes, yes, defend the black woman, queen, goddess, mother earth, yes. Black men are reacting better than we would have a decade ago. 
hell, even eight or seven years ago. When I left the United States, most of us would have uh, clowned Chris and lauded Will. The way that we're reacting today as men does show that we've gone through a maturation. We have matured since that time. And this process is not shared uh, by the bulk of sisters with us. It's shared by a minority of sisters with us. And they can't even come out and say it all the time because the loud mouths are the ones that are like, yes, yes, slap him. It's jokes. All the celebrities have said, you sit up front, you pay for those seats, you know what it is. That that joke was very light and it was actually a compliment. And all it really was was she didn't like it. She gave him a look and he responded because he had to go home with her. But we black men have looked at this and seen it for what it is. We finally looking and saying our whole culture is ucked up. And we're not going to participate in that and continue it anymore. Not even for mama. Shout out to Obsidian with that echo box. Not even for the so-called queen goddess mother earth. So-called because ain't no way that she's goddess. Ain't no human beings divine. This is what's going on. And this is what uh, we're facing. And I'm glad to see that, this, that the men have gone through this. And if we are maturing and we're leaving behind the sister, then so be it. They got tons of black women that are not Western and not Westernized so far. That's changing, but they're there. They got tons of Southeast tropical Asian women that are not Western and not Westernized. They got tons of Afro-Latina women who can still be traditional if you can take care of, of and do your part. So there's still options for us to find fair treatment. Alhamdulillah. It still exists. It's just that, like I said, we're going to have to be faster and more proactive about making sure they stick around because, well, you know, we're moving a lot more slowly to stop the spread of feminism than the feminist misandrists are moving to spread it. But fortunately, we are maturing and I'm glad to see that. Keep it up, black man. Eventually, we will be the resistance to the dysfunctional ninja culture that a lot of sisters want us to follow while they continue developing themselves educationally and career wise. Just so they can sit up and say they don't need us. While demanding that we continue dysfunction for their amusement and for their arousal. And for our own disposability. Thanks for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Assalamu alaikum and black heterosexual, non-select male power because they don't like it. And black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day. <laughs>